It's Your Call is proud to introduce this special series dedicated to issues facing women in 2011 and beyond. Gender equality, leadership, violence against women, and health are just a few of the topics we discuss in honor of Women's History Month when we put the focus on women, and it all begins right now. You see them every day, women in high-ranking political positions taking on incredibly difficult problems in the world. Women tackling social issues that affect all of us, or women demanding and getting some of the highest salaries in their field. But what about regular women, like those hard-working ones who make ends meet or struggle to work and raise their kids? How can they do it all and still be leaders? Well, we're gonna ask this panel of successful women to give us their advice in just a moment. Hello everyone, it's good to have you with us. I'm Lynn Doyle with another of our series, Focus on Women, which we've put together as part of National Women's Month. We're looking at some of the key issues facing women of all ages, socioeconomic groups, races, ethnicities. If you're a woman, we're giving you some insight and advice on how to deal with these all important issues. Among them, women and gender equality, women as leaders, sadly, women as victims, and lastly, women in health. Today's guests, though, are experts in the field of leadership, and they include Leslie Ann Miller, who is a highly respected attorney known across the state of Pennsylvania for her community activism and as an advocate of programs that advance women. Also with us, Jen Groover, who's an entrepreneur. She created the Butler Bag, and now she's created Leader Girls. She's also an author. The book is called What If and Why Not? Also with us is Councilwoman Blondell Reynolds Brown. She's an educator, a community activist, a political leader, and a concerned parent. And get this, she's the only woman in Philadelphia to run and win a citywide council seat in the last decade. Rounding out our great panel, Natalie Paquin, who is the CEO of Girl Scouts of Eastern Pennsylvania. She came from the Kimmel Center in Pennsylvania, where she was the executive vice president and chief operating officer. So if you can't find any leadership <laughs> <laughs> advice with this panel, then you need to turn the dial. Ladies, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. Thank thank you. I think this is gonna be a great panel. And I wanna start with the councilwoman because you are in a position of power and in this country, only 18% of women are in leadership positions, particularly in politics. Why do you think that is? Why aren't there more of us in those leadership roles? Well, it, uh, that stat is, is startling, but there are others that really help put that reality in context. Uh, Pennsylvania actually ranks number 47 mm -hmm. of women in elected office. And um, we get a D plus when it comes to women actually going to the polls, 65% of us are registered to vote, but only 43% of us go to the polls. So not only are we not holding office, we're not even voting for those who do hold office. Shame on you, ladies. We're gonna change that by the end of this hour. And so if we want a voice at the table, we have to first vote. Now, it's tough. It's a leap that many of us take, but the reality becomes issues that impact us that we care about. If we're at the table, then issues are like funding for child care, funding for senior citizens. How about funding for public education? We have to be at the table to make sure they are dealt with. Now, do you think that women exercise their voices enough? Do we let ourselves be heard, or are we still somewhat like sitting back and waiting for someone else to take charge? Well, I think the reality is that we still don't, unfortunately. We're starting to more and more, but uh, we're still a bit timid, unfortunately, and we need to do a better job of uh, standing up for ourselves and our own rights and uh, claiming our, our own position. I'm going to uh, venture that, a guess that no one in this room <laughs> is timid. <laughs> You've been a first in so many different areas. Right. Do we need more role models out there to look up to and say, okay, if she can do it, I'm going to try to you know, follow the path that you blazed? Well, actually, I think there are plenty of role models out there for us. I think that we need more women who've been role models who are willing to take the time to reach behind them and help other women on their way up. Yeah, and that's I mean, exactly I, what Natalie yeah, is doing with right, the Girl exactly. Scouts, that's, right? That's a perfect example. We can all think of, of, of plenty of women. I've got uh -oh. one sitting right here beside sure. me who's a, who's a perfect example. But, you know, unfortunately, there are all too many women today who haven't been touched by them. Yeah. Right. 
Well, I, I would say that that's a perfect segue for to talk about the Girl Scouts right. and what we do. Here in Pennsylvania, we serve 41,000 girls with the assistance of 14,000 volunteers. And so there is something that you can do, which is volunteer to work with our girls in nine counties in Pennsylvania to um, help build leadership. Mm -hmm. And what's interesting is um, we we always look to women who are role models and say, oh my gosh, she is just you know wonderful, she's amazing. How do I do that? I, I, there's just no time. My days are, are filled as, you know, as it is. I love the title of your book, What If and Why Not? Because you address that very issue. Right. Jen says in her book, hey, you know, you can find a way to make it happen. Right. So my mom always had a mantra. You're not allowed to complain about something unless you do something about it, which she was very involved in politics and taught me the, the very importance of activism. And if you want an advocacy as well, and if you want to make an impact in this world, you can't just sit back and expect other people to do things for you. You need to take action. If you're upset about something or you see something wrong, you need to do something about it. And so I do see a lot of women in my world. I surround myself by women who constantly help each other. And they realize the importance of the more I, I surround myself by women that are helping each other, the more successful I am. So getting rid of that old thought process of scarcity that if I help her, then she might get ahead of me. Right. No, that's not what it is anymore. And it's about helping each other to get to those goals. The general that are behind us and to move forward into new footprints ahead in our time. Yeah, I'm so glad you said that because one thing that we always try to advocate on this show is no girl on girl crime. You know, right. I mean, yes, that was right. the Tina Fey line in uh, Mean Girls however many years ago that, that mm -hmm. I'm dating myself. But, um, you know, it used to be in some professions, particularly very competitive ones, that we didn't help each other, you know, because we were just trying to make right. our way and forge ahead. But now the attitude's changing, isn't it? Isn't that a way that we can become better leaders is to assist everybody? For a lot of reasons. I mean, if we don't believe it's the moral thing to do or the right thing to do, then let's, let's think about self-interest. Because if we don't have a bench, then what young people are going to be prepared to move in and run our corporations right. and our hospitals and universities? Mm -hmm. We've got to, I'm told that in your own space, you can make a difference and touch one child's life. The huge difference that makes by investing, not necessarily money, but just your time. Right. And, and living a life that as, uh, enables you to be a role model. I mean, I say to so many people, you know, your kids are watching you. You don't. One thing you learn when your kids are grown is that they've been watching you yeah. since they could walk, and you don't realize that you're so busy making dinner and getting to work and driving the carpool that you don't realize that you know they're emulating what you do until later on, and you see it and you go, wow. Should have paid a little closer attention to that driving with the phone in my hand. <laughs> well, and my mom used to take me with her everywhere when she would go to work, and that in the '70s was really a touchy thing and she had this attitude like I'm gonna work and I'm gonna compete and I'm gonna make a statement but I'm, I'm gonna take my kids with me because I have no choice right now and things were a lot different than they are now in terms of situations for people helping but it taught me so much. After school, I would sit in television studios and watch TV shows being made, and I'd be at campaigns, door-to-door -door campaigning with my mom. It taught me so much, and I would have rather been playing with the kids in the playground after school, right. but it's what I see as my gift. I, see, I still see women um, judging those who work and those who don't work, and, and that's wrong because we should support each other because we're all in this together. And so it, with that said, I really want to incorporate my children in everything I do because it is a seed that's being planted for them. You don't know which one's going to really grow and sprout the most, right. but being a role model is the important part. But I think that there, there are different kinds of role models, and I think the most important thing that we can emphasize, I, you just said women who work and women who don't work. I believe that all women work. Oh, they, they do. Just, they, just, we, they, just, they just work right. in, in, in different don't, places. Don't get me wrong. No, no, I, I understand. I'm just saying as a social no, judgment, I, 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 not I, my judgment. I understand. <laughs> uh, you know, but, and, and, and my hat's off to women who work full-time raising children. Oh, yes. I think they work the hardest right. of anybody, just, just, just for the record. Uh, I, I, as I've listened just to the conversation that's that started thus far, what I've heard is all of us talking about the importance of having examples mm -hmm. to right. follow. Right. Uh, and and it's, it's, it, it's so important. Yeah, it, it is. Well, thank you all for being role models. I have to take a quick break. We're going to talk more about this. When we come back, we're going to ask what the biggest challenges of being a leader are. Mm. Do you have to sacrifice time with your kids, your partner? Does it mean that your work will suffer? Or can we have it all? We'll find out, but you got to stick with us for two minutes.